the lights off, Sir John? Mm, uh, no, you can leave them on. You can sign the mail before the meeting. I can post it on my way home. Hmm? It's after six. Dispatch is knocked off. I shall want you for the meeting, did I say? No. Uh, well, I shall. Is it likely to be a long meeting, Sir John? Why? I've a man. Who expects you when? Now. Well, whatever he's got tickets for, replace them on my personal expense account for another night. It's a party. I'll catch him up. Could I promise him about nine? Nine what? O'clock. To be there. Well, from... What I know, what I expect to drag out of Mr. Kenneth Bly, you do better to say midnight. Uh, sorry. I'll stick to nine. Always keep a man waiting. Miss Lingard, what were you doing with my coat? I was sewing on a button. What? Well, you had one dangling. It gave you a neglected look. If you are under any misapprehension, Miss Lingard, it was not Lady Wilder's habit to sew on my buttons. I don't know that I thought it was, Sir John. Uh, or did she down my socks? I've never been in a position to notice if anyone's needed to, Sir John. I'm in no way lacking wifely care and attention. Lady Wilder left the womanly touch to the domestic staff, and I still have that staff. Yes, Sir John. But it still hasn't got Lady Wilder. In her absence, you might draw its attention to the insides of your coat collars. Yes, Caswell? No, Susan Weldon. But Mr. Bly is here and he'd like you to come up if you have a moment. John? I haven't a moment to come up. But if you have one to come down, so. Protocol here, too. More than in your civil service. This new penthouse of mine might sit right on top of Bly Construction Limited, but Wilder's determined to keep it in his own version of the place as a private dwelling, in no way commercially connected to the company, as I'm supposed to be. Supposed? I am but a sitting tenant, Miss Weldon. I am also chairman of the National Export Board, and you know as well as I do that I have a right and a duty to see Wilder this evening, whatever he might be. I'll stop looking dubious, that's the chairman's order. I was concluding he's not going to answer. Oh, he is. A, because I'm not going to stop buzzing, and B, because he thinks you're doing it. Since Pamela left him, he's become more childish every day, and therefore predictable. He'll answer about now with, um, yes, 
and no question mark. Yes. <laughs> John, I, um, I was wondering if your invitation below included me. I am due to meet your son as joint managing director in about ten minutes. Did you wonder about that too? Yes. And I guess the matter for discussion. A Bly Construction Limited matter with Henderson present and my secretary. <laughs> no, I hadn't thought about Miss Lingard, but the rest, yes. And you still could wonder whether you'd be welcome? Only before the event, John, not during. Well, before the event, Caswell, I only have time to sign some letters. And to ask Miss Weldon a simple question, if she'd care to come down and find out what it is. Do you know the question? Yes. Hello, Susan. Hello, Father. Uh, well, I got your memo. Do I get a drink, too? Help yourself. Did John acknowledge? Mm hmm? His copy of your memo? No, only by a general irritational manner. Oh, rare case of my being able to speak in tune without having consulted him. The information the National Export Board would like, it can have. When John and I have decided what it is, and that depends on how soon I can drag out of him what I want it to be. Yes, this battle begins in about ten minutes. Are you free for a late dinner? Mm -hmm. Hey? Wilder's question. Is that your guess? No. No, you're not free or no, it's not your guess. Certainly the second. Oh, I would have thought you'd expect questions of that nature more frequently than ever now. However seldom a husband um, has dined with his wife, he's always at a loose end to know whom to dine with once he's left him. Drop your glasses. That's twice you've said Pamela's left Sir John, Mr. Bly. Sir John hasn't said it in my hearing once. Well, to hear it from Wilder, Pamela's gone to Italy to visit friends. <laughs> the fact is, she's deserted him. A fact he finds unsatisfactory. I don't think any man would find as much satisfaction in the fact you propose, Mr. Bly, as you seem to. You know what I wanted him up about. Now go down, please, and slip the little matter in while you're deciding the restaurant. Well, Mr. Kenneth's already indicated that that matter has to wait on a managerial difference that I'm not entitled to question Sir John about, as a silver servant. Then simply decide on the restaurant. I want five minutes alone with Ken. Do you want me to come back? Please. Thanks. What do you want out of Wilder tonight? You've no chance of getting, you know that. You really believe that Pamela's left him for good, don't you? Well, it's going to make him more pig-headed on every difference he has with you or with anybody. Pig-headed on the business front to save his... his damaged pride on the, on the domestic. No, he was short-term mind, Father. John's capacity to miss any woman, let alone a wife, isn't big enough to accommodate what matters in business for long-term. Any more than it equals your capacity to gloat. You'd like to see Pamela back? You'd like to have the undivided attention of the man at his best. If I weren't here at this penthouse close at hand, you wouldn't, you wouldn't last another month. Oh, lasted a year already. Yes, but until now, you've never proposed anything quite so stupid as the Indian project. You side with John, then? You prefer Yugoslavia? Well, I'm an influential man, Ken, whose public duty it is to consider political pressures. And these pressures indicate that I should side with Wilder, as you fear, and side heavily. Not only saying what the government would like of him, but um, what reward it has in mind if he can deliver. Well, then say it. But while he won his spurs simply by exporting aircraft, now he's winning his coronet. Not merely by shifting blies from home projects to foreign ones, but by only going into those countries that have suddenly become politically attractive to our government, like Yugoslavia, but not India. You're supposing peerage gossip, or you've heard something hard? Mm. Lord Wilder... Newly ermined couldn't be bounced out of blies inside a year. Float a supposition, you can spawn a fact. Are you merely floating? Yes, Ken. I am floating something. All around Westminster and down Whitehall. The only immediate cloud between Wilder and the honours list the possibility that Pamela will divorce him. Now, stick to first things, Father. How did you hear about the peerage? Or is it only a personal nightmare? <laughs> well, peerages are handed out only after consultation, Ken. And the sort of people consulted, if uh, the peerage is to do with uh, service on the export front, are chairman of things like the National Export Board. And uh, that, Ken, is the sort of person I am. 
Well, let's go down after another drink. Then you might see the sort of person I am. Down? Where? To Wilder? Mm, don't say I know you can't do that. This is in here why you can. Thank you. Uh, Miss Lingard, my coat collars, what did you mean? Well, your jackets are all right. They seem to be dry cleaned once a wear. But nobody's been brushing under the collars of your top coats. It's a dirty winter. If only the outside of a collar is brushed, the dirt is driven through to the inside. Ah, I see. I looked at my top coat, the collar was clean on the inside and out. I brushed it when I sewed on the button. Thank you, Miss Lingard. And uh, thanks for the button. Hello, Miss Weldon. Have you been waiting? Why didn't you knock? Someone might have let me in. Well, might I sit down, or that be laissez majesté in this office? Huh? I wouldn't know. I've not been in it before. I didn't expect to be in it tonight. I haven't boned up. Of course, sit down. It's not what I imagined. Then what or whoever is? Did you imagine me before you met me? I sometimes think I must still be imagining you. You had a question. Hmm? You wanted me to come down and find out what it was. Oh, yes, it's this, Susan. What are you doing in Bly's penthouse? I know that sounds starchy. And I know that if the penthouse weren't where it is, the answer everyone would hit on for himself for your being there is that Bly is the chairman of the National Export Board, and you are a civil service on, on that board, who he can call to his house on board business, just as I can call Miss Lingard to my house on company business. Well, if everyone would hit on that, why haven't you? I have. But everyone won't. In fact, nobody else will, because the penthouse is where it is, one floor above. I didn't put it there, John. To get there, Susan, you have to enter this building. Anyone seeing you entering will say you're not seeing Bly, but me. Well, at this moment, I am, aren't I? At any time, that's what will be said. Well, we've been gossiped about before. With reason. Gossip is only damaging when there isn't any reason. Aren't you underestimating my master? Mightn't people start gossip about him instead of you? You were very circumspect when I started galloping after you. I am surprised you can't see clearly what worries me now. Your civil service position. It's one thing to risk it knowingly, but another to lose it because of false rumour. I'm not sure of that, John. It's self-evident. I mean, I'm not sure that it's my position you're worried about. With Pamela still away, mightn't it be your position with her? Should she feel it could be suggested in a divorce court that I've taken to canoodling with you in your managerial office? Pamela is visiting friends in Italy. If she wanted a divorce, she'd be here, digging. About Mr. Bly's memo. Well, didn't you get it? I sent it by hand. Yes, I got it. Well, I'd like to put this clearly. Um, I know I'm not entitled to question you, and I know my chairman doesn't expect me to, but... Uh, if Blyze is entering Yugoslavia, and you feel free to say so, the board would be grateful for the information. Why, Susan? Well, it's generally felt in the city that you want Yugoslavia, but Kenneth Bly wants India. Well, India devalued last spring, whereas Yugoslavia took in a record number of tourists. One country is blushing red, the other is bleaching pink. One is the despair of our government, and the other is becoming a desirable political acquaintance. Or need I really go on? Having said all that, you could add that the only explanation for Kenneth Bly preferring India is that we all know that he automatically prefers what I don't. Well, I don't want to be dragged into that ring. I repeat simply that the National Export Board would like to know the intentions of this company if you feel free to express them. And I repeat, why? You said the board. You mean the chairman of the board. You mean Bly, Caswell. Well? Well, I'll tell you. Caswell's in the race for the honours list. He's saddled up for the peerage stakes. The sooner he can whip British firms into Yugoslavia, the sooner he'll get a coronet big enough to go around his waist. However, soothe the old gentleman, tell him I'm rhapsodical about the Slavs, and advise him to exercise due parental control over his son. But don't tell him this. I am also on the National Export Board, but I am a knight while he is still only 
a mister. And when I've been consulted about the honours list, he'll be lucky to get an OBE. Don't tell him that, because he knows it already. Hello, John. Oh, where's Henderson? Hello, Caswell. You've come to collect, Miss Weldon. Yes, thank you. You may go now. Henderson isn't here because he hasn't knocked yet, and I haven't said, come in. Well, Miss Lingard did her best to say it was only five to. However, in five minutes' time, we won't need to hold a formal meeting. We'll decide that when your father and Miss Weldon have left, and Miss Lingard and Henderson have come in. No need. So, sorry, John, I'm only doing my best to meet the request from the National Expo Board as soon as possible. And I mean, if we're unanimous, I don't see why we can't let father know right away. And we are unanimous? Uh, well, I am. You've come round to my point of view. No, but I'm sure you came to mine long ago. To me, this looks like a managerial meeting. Shouldn't we leave them to it? I really don't know. Well, I say, open it, John. My draft of uh, what I feel the export board can be told. As well, revise that when I've revised you. Miss Ingard? Yes, Sir John. Would you come in for a moment, please? This meeting is not going to start until you're gone, you know. I see no reason why Miss Weldon should compromise herself, even if you're prepared to. Miss Lingard, could you knock on Mr. Henderson's door and ask him to come in, please? He might do instead of a commissioner. Well, I'm not sure he's back from the Board of Trade yet. He's oh, um, don't bother the busy man. Read this to us, please. Draft memorandum from Sir John Wilder and Mr. Kenneth Bly to the Chairman of the National Export Board. In reply to your request for information, we, the above-mentioned Joint Managing Directors of Bly Construction Limited, have always been unanimous in an intention to tender for contracts in Yugoslavia. We are at present conserving our resources to do so, for which reason we shall not be tendering for the recently announced Indian infrastructure contract. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Shall I deliver it by hand or go through the motions of the GPO? Hand will do. Good night, John. Good night, Ken. And congratulations to you both. A wise decision. I'll come with you. Good night, Caswell. Good night, Susan. Will you still want Mr. Henderson? Yes. Already, you see? Already what? Already the call for Henderson. They'll pick over this all night looking for the trick. Oh, what is it? Well, I know John backwards. Look, if, I, if I'd said Yugoslavia to begin with, he'd have found some cranky reason for India. Or Tibet. So I said nothing. And as he shares your contempt for my ability to see what should be what, he felt free to see it for himself. Hello, you're late. No, you're on the dot. It oh, means hello, you're sir. late to see the match rained off. Thank you, Miss Lingard. Good night, Sir John. Hello, I was just knocking for you. Oh. Sit down, Don. Oh, what was I gathering in Lingard's office? I thought you were going to hold court with Ken and me, only. We're going into Yugoslavia. How'd you get that through? It means you have to go to Belgrade again. It doesn't. It's all lined up, ready to chug at the press of a button. You'll also have to go to Rome. The Italians have half our promises. Why not send me to India as well? They'll have bigger bruises. If anyone fancies himself as a mortician, Kenneth can go there. <laughs> All right, then. Unexpected early night, and I'll bounce off to Rome at dawn. Nice waste of time, company's time and money, but uh, I like the place in winter. I'll drive you to the airport. Well, that's very gracious of you, John, but over a small matter like this, I hardly need to count down. You know that Pamela is in Rome visiting friends. I'll give the address on the way. I'd like you to drop in on her, if you would. Much as I like Pamela, John, I hope you're not using me as a messenger boy. Well, you're going there in any case. Yes, but which is it? In any case, I'm going to Rome to see the Italians about an abandoned tender promise and so can drop in on Pamela. Or in any case, I'm going to Rome about your private life and so can drop in on the Italians about a tender regarding which you don't give a hoot. You 
have told her all that in a basic rate telegram? I would have. Since you're going in any case. Oh, we both know about that, John. I'm going there because you're not willing to go to her yourself. I'm pretty busy. It's the nature of my position that I generally have less time to spare than the junior director. Especially a director you appointed. How much longer do I have to go on thanking you for that? You're missing the point. I don't want her thinking that I can barge in any time I like. Nor do I want her to think that I'm checking up on her with sudden arrivals. And why didn't you invite her to come to you? She'd have mistaken it for a summons. She'd have refused. Or she'd have arrived difficult and suspicious. When you made me a director, John, I didn't know you wanted me to behave as a marriage counsellor. Do so and I'll bounce you. Oh, no, John. Today, I'm bouncing you for a change. Do you know what I'm most amazedly concluding? Is that you are frightened of your wife. Well, my advice is to hop on the plane in my seat and uh, tan hers. I've gone over it carefully with you, Don, because that's how I want you to go over it with her. I'm also amazedly concluding that you miss your wife like hell. And my advice there is to hop on the plane in my seat and let her tan yours. I said carefully, Don, giving her no reason to think that I'm making any demands, because I'm not. We can meet there, here, or anywhere she likes. And as for the money, make it very clear to her that I am not bargaining. Whatever she says, I'll accept. I don't give what Caswell calls a brass farthing for the money side. That's what Caswell would say, is refusing to give money for money. What? No, oh, nothing. She trusts you, Don. She knows I trust you. You're the only person that can deal with both of us, for both of us, without arousing suspicion in either of us. Don't prove me wrong. Let's hope she doesn't, John. She's the only person I know who can beat you every time. This is to be a matter of nobody trying to beat anybody. Anyway, come to that, I never noticed her beating me in the past. By the time she's finished, you've always been too dazed. Charles, they bunked the winter. Yes, Martinique, the caretaker told me. Brush up your Italian, the caretaker told you Mozambique. Ah, I suppose he did. Though either sounds as odd as the other when you have the whole world to choose from. However, I found the right address for you, apparently. Everybody seems to have called on the Dennis and got the right address for me, but not for them. Are you in hiding? No. It's aware, continually opening one's front door to redirect strangers looking for the people one's no longer living with. Well, I was looking for you. Pamela. And you're no stranger. What will you have to drink? Whatever you've prepared for me. This isn't Her Majesty's treasury, dear principal. It doesn't all come out of the same pot here. If you can drink it, I'm sure it's universally potable. You one sitting room or two? Two. You living here alone? Not even a housemaid, dear Mr. Granger. To clean these places, one uses a hose. Aren't you going to take your ministerial top coat off? Yeah. Where will I put it? Wherever you put your hat. <laughs> I know what it is. Hmm? The odd absence about my childhood sweetheart. Where's your frolly? At the treasury. Well, collect your drink. I have a balcony. It's rather cold out there. For you, I mean. I'm never cold, except in London. Donald? Charles is here. Hello. Hello. Donald thought the Dennis went to Martinique, too. Oh. You'll get frostbite doing that. Yes, it is cold. Let me close a few windows. They don't fit. You'll only create a draught. Do sit down. <laughs> well, while it's still in liquid form. <laughs> You know, for a man who's rapidly approaching middle age, if not already there, and frequently to be seen breezing around Arctic Britain in a noisy, whippy, very open two-seater, looking hefty, windswept, rain-swept, snow-swept, and brightly boyish, 
You do put on a disproportionate show of discomfort over a tiny but healthy nip in a little foreign fresh air. Don't take it out on me, Pamela. What? You know what. Oh, I'm sorry to speak in riddles. Uh, well, where shall I tell him? London, here, or some other place? John's worried about money. His and mine. That isn't true, Pamela. And I'm quite sure that domestic finance is too small a matter to entertain a treasury official of Charles's eminence. It's entertaining John. He summoned me to London. He's not summoned, Pamela. He's willing to... Shall I top this up? Oh, no. John has a representative here. Why shouldn't I? Do sit down, Donald. Pamela, do you mind if I come back later? Later I shall be out with Charles. Oh. Are you, uh... You down on treasury business, or just having a break? Neither. He's down on mine now. I mean this, Pamela. If you said Timbuktu, John would meet you there. Which, considering the nature of the item for discussion, how much time I have and how little he has, would prove to any independent observer, a divorce court judge, say, what an inconsiderate and cruel wife I've been. I, uh, I hadn't heard. You hadn't heard what? That you were divorcing each other. Neither had I. But now John's providing for that possibility, I can see that I should also. This, frankly, Pamela's becoming... Ridiculous, darling. No, that's what the situation used to be. Do you think John invented taxation? Perhaps I ought to explain this to you. A. As my husband, John pays my tax on anything of mine that isn't protected by one or two artful little companies. B, now we're no longer living together, he'd like to establish what's his and what's mine, something which has never been particularly clear to us, however carefully the tax accountant has put it in the t returns. Now, if I agree that what's mine is his, in order to avoid paying tax on it myself, I will, if I'm dumb, deaf and blind, find that after the divorce, He's got what's mine for good. Pamela, I, I don't know whether I expected you to believe what I'm sure of, that John doesn't give a damn for money in the personal sense. But what I didn't come here prepared to consider was that you gave such a big damn about it yourself. What I give a damn about is that Damn man ever getting the better of me again over anything. Good. You must have handled it with a delicacy beyond me. I didn't expect her to say Rome, but I half expected a word. Alice Springs, Baku. Or... Uh, no, thanks. John. What exactly does she mean by here? The uh, town flat or the house? Well, she considered both and mentioned that the house was in her name. Well, all property should be in the wife's name. That's tax advice. The husband loses while he's alive, the wife wins when he's dead. Was it bought with your money, though? Well, how should I know? I left all that to Jemison. Yes, well, Jemison's no longer her accountant now, John. She, she's got a bright new boy, Silby of Silby and Pringle. The crowd to beat the crown on the West Dominion Enterprises poll tax case. I hope you made it clear to her that I didn't intend to have Jemison sitting in personally, only his list of questions. Yes. She won't have Silby sitting in personally either. Just his list of questions. Well, if she feels on her own ground in the country, fine. Ah, the more she feels at home, the easier we'll get all through the bumps. By here, John, she meant here. This office. Considerate of her. I wasn't hoping to fit her in between appointments. Well, she said it was a business matter. It should be discussed in a place devoted to business. She's no more understandable absent than she was present. However, here, fine. Now, the next time you manage something for me as well as you manage this, John, don't sulk. You haven't been doing an office boy's job. You've done a service for me that only a director like you could. I find she's changed, John. Well, we all grow a little older every day. Oh, she looks younger. Good. But sounds older. Oh, she still says cranky things, but she no longer laughs at her own jokes to take the spite out of them. Two months with the Dennis would make it difficult for anybody to laugh. She's no longer with them, John. She's taken a small flat near the tomb of Cestius. Well, no wonder she wants to come to London. 
I can't see her enjoying a winter in Italy on her own. The lonely Roman winter of Lady Wilder. Well, people drop in, of course. Of any interest, too? Well, I did. Um, Mrs. Toole, she used to be Tony Blood's wife. Um, that Italian minister's sister that you fancied. Charles, um, old Sir Robert Coulson. Oh, there's quite a bit of traffic. Charles who? Yes, Caswell? John, uh, there's a matter at the National Export Board next Wednesday. It's a small matter, but uh, I think it would look well if either you or Ken could attend in person. Well, if it's a small matter, let Kenneth go. Well, he's uh, quite willing if needed, but it's open day at his daughter's school. Yes, well, with me, it's Pamela Day. Uh, no, Caswell, I shan't be visiting her in Rome. I shall be welcoming her in London. You don't like that, do you? No, I don't. There's only one way to handle men like Wilder. Keep them unhappy. I disagree. Wilder's hardest to handle when peeved. No, I'm all for the reunion. And I drink to his future cosy marriage until boredom does him petrify. Well, if there is a reunion, I shall do something to wreck it that will surprise even you. I'd ask you what that was if I thought you knew. I know. I know it as well as I know that he's got to be kept out of the House of Lords. How's your man? Which one? Why didn't you join at the party the other day? Which party? Well, if you have another one tonight, you can knock off as soon as you've got rid of these. Thank you, Sir John. And uh, freshen up those a little. Those what? Those flowers the central heating's got of them. No, oh, they've only opened a little. Well, if that's how they're supposed to look. Well, I give them an aspirin, but you don't want them to last through to tomorrow, do you? No, only through my final appointment tonight. Oh, I thought you'd finished when you'd seen Mr. Jemison. No. Don't hold yourself up, Miss Inga. Good night, Sir John. Oh, I'll uh, have the phone switched through to the switchboard, shall I? Uh, no, I don't want to be interrupted. And disconnect the intercoms too, will you? Well, I can't disconnect my line to you. Well, it doesn't matter since you won't be there. Good night, Sir John. Good night. Yes, Sir John. Huh? Mr. Granger. From the Treasury? Yes, Sir John. Weren't you expecting him? No. Well, I think I got a minute. Hello, Charles. Make it quick, will you? I've only the amount of time that a usually late person normally takes to keep an appointment set for five minutes ago. Yes, I know. Know what? Yes? Lady Wilder is here, Sir John. Oh, good. Well, whatever it is, Charles, I'm afraid we'll have to wait until tomorrow. Hello, Pamela. Uh, be on the safe side, Charles. Fix a time with Miss Lingard as you go, huh? Oh, I shall want Charles here, John. You can have Henderson in as well if you like. It would only be fair. Do sit down, Charles. Did you get the list from Sylvie? Yes. <clears throat> I dare say you, John, have received one from Jemison. I thought we might begin by comparing the property claim. We might begin? Charles is here as a friend, John. Who? And as a treasury expert. I don't give a rolled brolly for his being a treasury expert. A treasury expert who won't let you slip anything past me. I see you still spend your time not giving things about or to people. Just now it was a rolled brolly for Charles. A casual bly, it used to be a 40-foot barge pole you wouldn't touch his suggestions with. Regarding a socialist minister, I remember a toothpick who wouldn't give his views. And then there was a match you begrudged for Ken Bly, even when he was in the middle of giving up smoking. I assure you, I shan't be in the least bit surprised to find there are more and better things that you're not prepared to give me. Back. I had hoped that Henderson had made it quite clear. 
whether we like it or not, we both have to make exceedingly overdue personal tax returns. Since we no longer have the same accountant, some confusion could arise. I hope I excite no official inquiry from Charles, the Treasury man, when I say that while tax evasion is illegal, tax avoidance is not. So in the past, uh, certain sources of income which belong to you were described as belonging to me because I could claim expenses on them. Yeah, I hope I've got that right. Uh, and on the other hand, certain sources of mine were entered as sources belonging to companies set up for you. Since in that way, tax from the top came more from me than from you. Uh, don't expect me, John, to understand a system designed to be misunderstood by a taxation man. That's a very good description. I don't understand it myself. Modesty ill becomes you. Hmm? Only you could have invented it. It's perfectly normal, as I have it from Sylvie, uh, provided it's consistent from year to year. But now that you're not living together, consultation is required to keep it consistent. The house, for instance. Do you still want that down in your name? Why do you ask? Were you thinking of buying it? Silby's impression is that it was bought mostly with Pamela's money. Jemison's is that he exercised the full discretion I gave him to restore my wife's expended capital by transferring certain shares I bought before the marriage. However, in any marriage, I should think it'd be difficult to say what was whose after 14 years. I recall the expenditure of my capital, but not the transfer of your shares. You were in a, an inattentive mood in those pleasant days. It's obvious, of course, that it's to your mutual benefit if you, John, can claim that you use the house for business entertainment. Foreign businessmen, naturally. The tax concession, one might say, benefited you both. Once. But... But it doesn't benefit me any longer now we're no longer living together. It benefits just you. And you do see, in the event of your death, the duties would be payable out of your estate which would mean, of course, in this instance, that they were actually paid out of Pamela's. Well, what are you saying? That if we were still living together, she could notice signs of my approaching mortality and pop the house back in her name so that my death wouldn't cost her a penny? No, he's saying, as I am, that if the house were in my name now, it wouldn't matter if you dropped dead tomorrow. Thank you. I'm sure Pamela didn't mean that quite as it sounded. Are you? Pamela, I asked you here in good faith for a conference between man and wife. It was not in my mind what was whose, only what you felt you wanted. That you could have had without bringing Charles. That you might not get now that you have brought him. Don't underestimate yourself, John. Believe me, I shouldn't expect to get back everything you've got from me, even if I brought along the Chancellor of the Exchequer. However, Sylvie's quite sure he can prove the house. Why, that all the time? Well, I might very well want the use of it myself this winter, and I wouldn't want you prowling in and out like the Lord of my manor. Good evening, Charles. Mm -hmm. If this is a matter which cannot be settled in a friendly way between the only two people it concerns, then it will have to go to the accountants. Let them fight over it. I refuse to. Only because you think your Jemison can lick my Sylvie. Well, I'm content to think the opposite. Particularly as I shall be sitting at my man's shoulder with Charles. All right. But that little massacre is not going to take place in this office. Except on government business, I don't want to see you here again. I would say, get out. If I didn't feel that with your customary ministerial delicacy, you would have understood that you should have done already. Charles is not going until I do, John. Which is now, Pamela? I'd say you heard a husband tell his wife to get out, wouldn't you? Good. Leave that, Charlie. Permit me the pleasure of showing you my own door. Well, that, I think you'll find, was financed by Bly Construction Limited. So that was the Charles Henderson. What? The Tom Henderson saw. Keep out! Hello, Charles. Waiting for John? Who's he got in there? Hmm? Um, Pamela. Oh, yes, of course, the 23rd. 
I, I was referring to the date. You treasury chaps are going into bit, aren't you? Hmm? I've just come back from the National Export Board. What's all this about corporation tax and uh, foreign subsidiaries? Oh, it's, it's not as sinister as it sounds. I've, I've the opposite white paper here. You're a little early to start sowing that seed, John. Charles was in Rome for the Treasury. He just dropped in in exactly the same way as Henderson on Business for Flies just dropped in also. That's uh, not a very good description. You're full of them tonight. Charlie boy wants to marry you. I always thought he did. Frankly, I doubt his capacity. I've always regarded you as his excuse for remaining a neuter. He could have gone until he was 80. Palpably past the explaining that his only true love has been denied him. Walled up by the robber baron. Now that you're out and running wild, he's serious. He really wants you and you know it and you like it. Yes, I usually know when a man really wants me. Or doesn't. The moment you leave me, down he trots. Taking two months about it. Still better late than never. Gallantly to Rome. One eye on your entrancing form and the other on your bank balance. You're confusing yourself with him. It was you who had no money when you married me. Well, I'm not going to be the one to hand over everything to your private little companies in order to avoid tax now so you can get the lot after the divorce. Don't accuse me of trying to do what you're trying to do. First, anyway. First! Why all the preparations? Why not cable me? Why not telephone me? Why send Henderson to Rome to collect evidence? Why put me in the moral situation of having to come here or sound like a bitch to a divorce court judge who are all men, misogynistic old men? Why make me come to your den in London? Anybody would think you couldn't bear to have me away from you any longer. Anybody would think. Anybody would think that. Jew Pamela. How about yourself? Yes? Yes? Uh, uh who, who is that? Casual Pamela. This child, then? Yes. Charles, then be an angel. Take your sister out to dinner, will you? Oh, Caswell. Yes. Yes, all right. You know the gossip, don't you? It's not gossip, no. I've always regarded that word as inappropriate for a reconciliation in marriage. The peerage gossip. We're not entitled to speak about that. If someone like you did, a certain knight's lady might understand why it was convenient for him to have her back. Until he'd got his coronet on. And then she might uh, shoot off again in time to stop him getting it. Hello, uh, Caswell. Charles. Uh, only one channel. Unless you know how to reanimate this thing, I shall have to traipse down to the basement. For what? For my car. I, I can't ring for it or bus for it. Hardly lordly conduct, John, wandering around looking for your own role. Lordly? Charles has just been confirming. But the good word I'm putting in for you should be enough to swing it. I'm making you appear, John. And that's the power. I'm doing it. You can save your time. I don't want to be a peer. That's power. However, spread the rumor. It's even more powerful to refuse when everybody knows. Charles, would you see that Pamela's down in the front in about five minutes? Also my coat. You were indiscreet to mention that at all. Yes. 
Perhaps I won't. Uh, where's, where's John? You know, that man's becoming awfully absent-minded. He's wandering around with half his face unshaven. I didn't notice. No, it's not the sort of thing you should as a man, Charles. And how did you, Pamela? Optically or um, tactilely? Tact what, -ly? By fleshly contact. <laughs> Congratulations, Pamela. You're going to look well in a tiara. Oh. I wish I could congratulate you also. But it doesn't seem fitting to congratulate a woman whose husband wants her back merely so that he can become a peer. Is, is that what John's going to be? Now that you're going back to him, now that there's no um, domestic blot. Of course, if you hadn't, well... Hell. Sorry, Pamela. But it was something that you were entitled to know about. Yes. Thank you. For God's sake, don't tell John you told me, though. Otherwise, he might think that was the only reason I've come back to him. Thank you.